Let's continue from where we left last time. We are going to be covering the second Bannermanet cycle, the rest of it. Uh, we started last time and then we'll talk about the second Lemmikainen cycle, Runos 26 through 30. Um, see if we if we get to the Kullero cycle. If not, we'll do that next time. So uh, we left at chapter 19 uh, entitled Vipers and Beasts and, and Pike. Now we are in a in a situation where uh, the Northland maid has said to Dynamoinen that she still doesn't want to marry him, uh, and she chooses Ilmarinen, the smith who had uh, forged the sampo. But uh, they had, of course, Ilmarinen and the maid had also met before when Ilmarinen was there. Forging this sample, interestingly, the Kalevala doesn't say anything, tell anything about their relationship then, but uh, except that the girl was promised for Ilmarinen, but then, then they broke the promise. So now Ilmarinen is back there as well. Dynamoinen has been turned down by this maid of the North farm, and, uh, and uh, the girl now wants to marry Ilmarinen. Ilmarinen is very nice looking now, <laughs> he's been you know, cleaned, cleaned and is in nice clothes and he is much younger than Väinämöinen. But of course things are never as easy as we would think. Uh, Ilmarinen has to perform certain tasks, do, do these impossible tasks again, because the mother of the girl, Louhi, uh, is demanding that before he gets the girl, he needs to do uh, these uh, this, uh, tasks, these three things. So, uh, so there's the condition of uh, having to pl plow a field full of vipers, and uh, then Ilmarinen just, you know, makes iron shoes that uh, allow him to do that without getting hurt. Uh, by the vipers, and he plows that uh, snaky uh, field. It's kind of a gross idea. Uh, and uh, all through these different tasks, the the girl Ilmarinen's bride is uh, helping helping him. So this is how you do it: giving giving him hints of how to how to manage these tasks. Uh, the second condition on page 239, the, uh, the Northland, uh, mistress of Northland, this is Lowy, says at the bottom of the page, the maid will be given, the girl be here bestowed only if you bring me Tuoni's bear, quell the wolf of the dead, dead land. So again, you know, we are, we are, we have a reference to this place of the dead, dead and Ilmarinen has to go and, uh, and get the, get the uh, bear, bear uh, or the beasts, bear or wolf. Again, you know, we don't know which one it, it actually is, but, uh, but a beast. So he manages to do that and uh, brings, brings the wolf uh, brittle and the bear in iron chains from Tuoni's heath there from within the blue backwoods, he said when he came from there, give your daughter hag, for I have brought Tuoni's bear, quelled the wolf of the deadland. Uh, well, uh, the mistress of Northland Low is not ready to do it yet, so, uh, so she says, the Kalu will not be given, the mallard handed over. Remember these uh, bird names often used for, for young beautiful women? Till you have got the great scaly pike, the quick fleshy fish from Tuonela's river there, from the dale of the dead land. And again, uh, Ilmarinen needs to go there, but uh, the girl gives her instructions of how to actually do it. Um, so, um, so we end up in a situation that Ilmarinen performs these tasks, that he is these impossible tasks that he is, uh, he is uh, supposed to do, 
and um, and he then is promised the girl, and then we start the wedding planning. At the same time, of course, the the Vanamonen, uh, Vanamonen is uh, the the uh, poor old Vanamonen has been rejected again, and on page 251. Uh, there's a reference to him, he's in the sidelines now. As for old Vanaman and his head down in bad spirits, as he went homeward, he uttered a word, broke thus. Woe is me, a weary man, for I did not know to marry young, to seek at the time of my life. He regrets his all who regrets a young marriage, having, having a child when a child founding the family when small. So uh, Vanaman sees that he should have married when he was younger, um, and he didn't. So uh, Vanaman is kind of, you know, uh, in a sad place. But uh, he becomes a wedding singer, so, <laughs> so he gets over it. Uh, so we have a chapter 20 uh, named Slaughtering and Brewing. And this is, uh, this is an interesting chapter because it tells, it gives a lot of information about how, how uh, feasts were planned, what kinds of foods, what kinds of drinks were prepared and how they were prepared. And, uh, and uh, so we've got kind of like um, recipes here, again, the origins the origin chant on page 255. Uh, the uh, old man, again, we have a wise old man speaking from the stove. Barley is beer's origin, hot that of the well known drink. Though not born without water, nor without harsh fire, Hop, son of Hubbub, was stuck in the ground when small, was plowed in, a, in as a wiper, was tossed in as a nettle, and so on and so forth. So we have the recipe, the recipe continues for several pages. Osmo's daughter, the beer smith, the brewer woman, took a grain of barley, six grains of barley, seven hop catkins of water, eight ladle, ladlefuls. So, uh, so we get these recipes, we get this information about how a feast was supposed to be prepared. And uh, it's, uh, it's quite, um, quite interesting from, uh, from ethnographic point of view in a way. So the origins of these, uh, these uh, foods and these drinks uh, given here. So uh, you have this ox, which is really, really huge, which needs to be slaughtered, and beer needs to be brewed. Uh, brewed. So, um, so then we get to the wedding when the preparations are done. That is uh, chapter 21. Um, and uh, what what we have is, is, is again, you know, the preparations continue, how to, how to do this wedding. And, uh, and then, then we get the, um, the weird sidelines, like there's a child on the floor, page 278. There was a child on the floor, a milk beer, be be beard, milk beard, on the stove seat. The child declared from the floor, from the seat, the boy chattered, I'm of no great age, no mighty stature, be that as it may, if others, plump ones, won't sing, and men fatter ones won't chant, nor full of bloody ones lilt, then I, a lean boy, will sing, a skinny boy will warble. So, uh, so we have this child who offers to sing, um, just like you know, a total side character, but it's it's interesting. But then they then they then Vanaman comes back and he's the he's he becomes the wedding singer, so to say. Then chapter two is uh, is laments, and uh, the the fact that <coughs> a wedding happens 
there's a is a happy occasion, but there's also this sadness because the bride needs to leave her home, her parents, her father, her mother, her siblings, and go to a place which is unknown to her, a strange place to the bridegroom's home. And uh, this particular, um, the, the meaning of this um, entire uh, second, the latter part of the uh, second Vanaman cycle is to, is to give an idea of, uh, of what getting married meant from the woman's point of view specifically that uh, they have to leave and it's sad for them. Uh, the bride, Lohi's daughter, who doesn't interestingly have a name, he, uh, she is worried, um, she uh, really gets, gets sad about having to, having to leave on page 286. The hapless maid sighed. She sighed and she gasped. Grief weighed on her heart, tears loaded her eyes, but she got this into words. This I knew and this I thought, this I thought throughout my days, said through all my growing time, you maid will not be a maid within your own parents' care, upon your own father's grounds, within your own mother's rooms. You would only be a maid going to a husband's house, to strange places. And, uh, and then we have, uh, so we have these laments about how sad it is to leave. The, uh, child, the, the bride continues to cry, uh, cry on page 293. The hapless maid sighed, the, uh, she sighed and she gasped. She fell to weeping, turned to shedding tears. And, uh, and uh, this continues. And then we get to the instructions and the warning. Uh, very interesting. Uh, still today, sometimes in in weddings, you may find a situation where the bride and the groom are given a, a, a copy of uh, of some of a part of the Kalevala where you give instructions to the bride and you give instruct instructions to the bridegroom. So both of them get instructions of, this is kind of like marriage counseling in the ancient times. Uh, you have to leave certain things, you have to be prepared to go to this new place, especially for the woman that you have to leave. And some of these, some of these instructions are, are very interesting. Be kind to the animals that you take care of, be a miracle woman, uh, and this is on page 302. A child is crying, there is a small one inside the quilts, and the poor child cannot speak. Neither can the infant say whether it's cold or hungry, or what else is the matter before the one it knows comes, before the mother comes, and it hears its mother's voice. But when you come in, come in as four, with a water pail in your hand, bath whisk under your arm, a fire stick between your teeth, and yourself making the fourth. Start wiping the boards, sweeping the plank for floors, toss water up on the floor, don't chuck it over the child. Should you see a child upon the floor, even if it is sister-in-law's child, lift the child onto a bench, wash its eyes and smooth its hair, put some bread into its hand, spread some butter on the bread. If there's no bread in the house, put a wood chip in its hand. So, uh, so be this miracle woman who can do uh, four things at the same time and be kind to animals, be kind to children, even if the child is not your own. And, uh, and uh, this is kind of, kind of sweet. It also gives a, a good window into what a woman's life was like in that world. 
but it also uh, moves on uh, to give warnings there at the end of uh, end of uh, 23, uh, chapter 23, there is this uh, old beggar woman who, uh, who, who continues to her own lament. Uh, and this is an example of what will happen if you let your husband be uh, the dictator. Because it's easy in, 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 in just, you know, give in and let the, let the husband do everything and uh, and uh, that is warned against that you have to put your foot down and say what your own opinions are, which is a in really interesting view of uh, the expectations for, for women that uh, in, in a world where men do make decisions, women in the Kalevala also uh, were expected to stand their own Ground. So this is a warning about you know not being a pushover in uh, in front of your husband. Um, and and this old beggar woman tells tells her own uh, sad story uh, because he let her husband do all kinds of things. Um, and she had a sad ending there. So instructions end in a very low note, in a way, the beggar woman's sad story of, of what happened. But it's a, it's a warning that do unlike I did. Uh, we have the departure, then, uh, then the bride and the bridegroom leave, and we have, um, we have instructions now for the bridegroom as well. Husbands must take good care of the wives, the brides, uh, take her back to visit their home uh, often. So even though you may live, be living far away, take the wife back to see her own family often so that she will stay happier. Uh, this is pre-marriage counseling, counseling on page 327, ancient Finnish. Uh, pre-marriage counseling, just don't poor bridegroom ill-treat the maiden, guide her with surf whips, with leather whips make her mew, with five lashes make her squeal, at the hot end make her yell. Uh, so don't beat your wife, uh, defend your wife, don't let mother-in-law smite, nor father-in-law scold her, don't let a stranger hate her, another house slander her. Important, important um, advice, which we can take even today, that you know, can treat your spouse well, uh, then it, it continues. Uh, if, you need to, if you need to advise your wife, do it in, in private, don't do it in public, so you don't embarrass her. Uh, and if you have to hit her, don't leave any visible bruises. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's uh, an old text. Um, there is a parallel to the old beggar woman. There is an old beggar man uh, on the, on the stovetop like these old men tend to be. They are old and often uh, have bad eyesight. But uh, this is a tramp uh, from the uh, from the hearth who is speaking, and he is giving more advice for the bridegroom uh, in this departure uh, chapter on page 329 in the middle. Just don't, poor bridegroom, mark a woman's will, a woman's will, a lark's tongue, as I did, a luckless boy. He had been married to a, to a bad woman, and he is warning Ilmarinen against, uh, against such a situation, which uh, didn't bring, bring uh, him to a good place. So also this, this beggar, uh, beggar uh, man says, when, when the wife was beaten, she became nice. So. Uh, uh, not something to 
heed in today's world. So we start the bride's farewell, the hapless maid who is still sighing and gasping and shedding tears. And uh, so he, she says farewell to her own home, her parents and her, uh, her siblings. When I come uh, for, a, for a visit, parents will uh, already be dead. She laments that this may be sad, this may be the last I see of you. So uh, then they have to leave. And uh, then the smith Ilmarinen grabbed the maid into his sleigh, stuck, uh, struck the courser with the lash, uttered a word, and spoke thus. Fare you well, lake shores, lake shores, and field banks, all you firs upon the hill, all tall trees in the pine wood, bird cherries behind the house, junipers on the well, well path, all berry stalks, and uh, on the ground, berry stalks, grass stems, willow shrubs, spru spruce roots, all the foliage, birch uh, bark. And then they leave from the yards of the Northland. But you see, you know, you, you paint this picture of this beautiful, um, beautiful nature uh, place where, you know, you've got all kinds of, you know, vegetations. And uh, the children in the Northland, they mourn the fact that they have lost their, their uh, sister or relative to, uh, to marriage to Smith Ilmarin. And then we have the homecoming on uh, uh, chapter 25. Ilmarin spoke uh, eagerly, waiting uh, there to have, have Ilmarin bring the bride home and Ilmarinen's mother Lokka, a uh, gentle mistress, Kaleva daughter, fair wife, uttered a word and spoke thus, that is my son's sledge, he is coming from Northland with his young maiden. And, uh, and we, we, uh, we are given a picture of how the bride and the bridegroom, how they are treated, how they are welcomed and then there is another feast um, that happens. And again, Vainamönen also in this second wedding party, he is, uh, he is singing on uh, page 348. Now, who here was to be the cuckoo, the proper singer, steady old Vainamönen, the everlasting singer? He started the song, said about the job of tales. He says with this word, he spoke with this speech. And uh, so, so it seems that Vainamönen uh, has accepted his faith that he's never going to be getting a wife. Everybody else does, but not he. And uh, and we'll leave the second Vainamönen cycle here, um, except that. With one note, Vainamönen needs to make one more visit, visit to the Tuonela because his sleigh breaks down on the way back home. So uh, the second Vainamönen cycle ends after after this, and we start the, the second Lemminkäinen cycle. Now remember, Lemminkäinen has several different names. He's Ahti. He's the island boy. He's uh, he's uh, far mind. He's the lover boy. He's the one who is the, the uh, very restless one who doesn't listen to his mother's advice. And um, so we are back uh, in, in the situation we left Lemminkainen when Lemminkainen's mother raked him and put him back together with, with uh, all these natural remedies and, and her, her love. Uh, in a way, and uh, build him back into a man. And uh, when Lemmy kind of said, "Oh, I'm going to go back to back to the Northland farm to get that woman from there," and then the mother put her foot down and said, "No, you're coming home with me." And now they have been home. He has been home with her mother. What he's doing is he's plowing a field. He's doing domestic work, and. Uh, all of a sudden, Lemminkainen 
hears uh, this clatter, uh, this sound, this happy noise, singing, dancing from very, very far away. Uh, what has happened is when they had the big feast in the Northland farm, people were invited, everybody was invited there. It was a huge, huge wedding except for Lemminkäinen, because Lemminkäinen is the troublemaker. He was the troublemaker even, you know, when he first time went to the Northland farm and uh, behaves badly. So he was not invited. Lemminkäinen hears there's a wedding going on, I wasn't invited. And he is very peeved about that. So he goes inside, uh, tells her mother to uh, get her get her, uh, give her, give him, give him, he tells his mother to give him food. Oh my mother, old woman, this is perilous journey uh, 26, uh, runo 26. Oh my mother, old woman, put out food quickly for a hungry man to eat, for one who wants it to bite. Heat the sauna this minute, burn the fire down in the room, uh, where a man makes himself clean, the best fellow grooms himself. So we always have, you know, men uh, getting ready to go somewhere, uh, somewhere important. <laughs> they, uh, the, the sauna needs to be warmed up. Of course, this Finnish habit that continues till today. There is a sauna in every family, in every house, one or two sometimes. And you know, in apartment buildings, you have you have saunas usually at the basement, uh, which people take turns going to. So it is it is an essential part of the Finnish culture, and that's where uh, that's where the, the men typically they get clean. But you know, we find women in the saunas too, in in the Kalevala. So um, let me get and ask his mother. To, uh, to warm up the sauna um, so that he can get clean. Uh, remember, Ilmarinen asked his sister Anniki to, to warm up the sauna so he can, he can, get, he can get clean cleaned up for uh, finding a wife from the Northland. So now Lemminkäinen kind of wants to go there to, uh, to be a troublemaker because he's upset because he wasn't invited to this wedding. And he asks his mother, he, you know, his, he tells his mother a lot of things. Oh, my mother, old woman, step to the shed on the hill. Bring from there my comely gear. Carry the hard-wearing clothes for me to put on to, uh, to kit myself out. And the mother is suspicious. What is he up to again? Where are you bound, my offspring? Are you off to hunt the lynx? or else to ski after elk or to shoot squirrel. So the mother is kind of like hoping that he's just going to go and do some hunting. But no, that's not what Vanimo, uh, the, uh, what, what Lemminkainen is, uh, is planning to do. He wants to uh, go uh, and be a problem for the North Far because he wasn't invited. So um, the mother forbade her son from going and the woman banned her man. This is evidently Kyllikki, uh, whom Lemminkäinen had just, you know, initially <laughs> brought there against her will, but who now is committed to Lemminkäinen and uh, Lemminkäinen yet left her there and went to woo the maiden from the North Northland farm. So uh, the mother forbade her son, and the woman banned her man. Two maidens banned him. Three nature daughters forbade Lemminkäinen to go off to good Northland feast. And uh, they are very adamant, the mother specifically, you are not invited there, simply not wanted at all. And uh, Lemminkäinen is like, what do I care? Uh, Wretches go when invited, a good one leaps up when not. 
so he is very cocky about it. But the mother starts another because this is not this is not helping her. Just saying, do not go. Lemming and is set his has set his mind that he is going to go. So uh, the uh, mother starts telling telling what is going to happen on the road there. That this is a, this is a scary trip, a very very scary trip. It's a perilous journey. And uh, she tells him about the dooms that are waiting for Lemminkäinen on his way to the North Northland farm. First, there's an eagle, a, a horrible eagle, uh, that is very, very dangerous. And Lemminkäinen just said, that doom is a woman's doom. This no, it is no death for a fellow. Uh, very sexist, but we are in this world. Lenny Cannon's mother tells him about the second doom that is red hot rocks uh, and a, a fiery ravine, and you can cross it because of those uh, of those rocks that are fiery red hot. But Lemming Cannon belittles this as well. That is no man's doom, nor a death for a fellow. Um, so the mother says there's a third doom on your way to the Northland farm if you choose to go. And this doom is the third of the dooms. You will go a bit further. You'll finish a day from there heading for Northland Gateway. Through the narrowest region, a wolf will pounce upon you. A bear will attack you. And uh, Lemmingan just says, Let a you be eaten young, be torn apart fresh, but not even the worst man, the sleepiest of fellows. I'm belted with a man's belt, fixed with a man's pin, tied with a fellow's buckles so that I shall not fall yet into the dreamer's wolf's mouth. Uh, he is very, very macho. He says he's going to just sing these bears away. And, and, and Lemminkainen is a singer as well. Lemminkainen's mother says, no, it's not only these three things, these three dooms. Uh, the eagle, the hot, uh, hot, uh, fiery stones, and the bear or wolf, and the, no, it's there's something worse. There's a fence that goes from the ground up to uh, the heaven uh, around the Northland farm, so you cannot pass that. And it's not just a regular iron <laughs> rod. Fence. It, it's a, it's an iron rod fence which has lizards and snakes, uh, you know, just teeming all over all over it, and um, and then not only that, but then there is a huge snake. Uh, also, if you know, if he if he passes the gate, there is a horrendously huge, big, big black snake that is. Uh, it, 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 the last danger for Lemminkäinen. And um, uh, so she describes this snake. On the ground are other worms, a line of vipers of snakes, with their tongues seething above, with their tails waving below. One more dreadful than others lies across before the gate, longer than cabin timber, thicker than a lane doorpost with its tongue seething above, with its mouth above hissing, not for anyone except hapless you. And we are of course reminded of other kinds of snakes, we, big snakes we've been reading about, or snakes or dragons. Uh, in uh, Remember Fafnir from the saga of the Volsungs, who was this big snake that Sigurd then, you know, kills from it, the bottom secretly, kind of like, you know, is waiting for the snake to slither uh, above him, and then he, he kills, uh, puts his dagger or sword into, into the snake's heart. 
we'll see how Lemming Cannon deals with the snake. This is a different, different approach. So Lemming Cannon says, I'm not afraid of snakes. I have plowed a field of snakes. Again, it seems to be the thing that, that these uh, Kalevala men are like regularly doing, not only Ilmarinen as one of the tasks he needed to, to do to get the wife, but uh, Lemminkainen also says, I have, I have plowed a field of snakes. So uh, um, Lemminkainen uh, decides to go, and uh, uh, despite the fact that the mother reminds him that, that I have rescued you uh, and put you back together alive. <laughs> and uh, so on page 366, Lemming and his mother said, Oh, my luckless boy, still you think of how it was. You boast of your last visit because of Lemming Cannon is like, oh, I, I've been there before, I've, I've done this and, and shown them who I am. And the mother reminds him that you boast of that last visit. But um, you, yes, you have been there before, I know, in those cabins of Northland, swum all the still pools, sampled well choked ponds, shot rapids roaring current in a flash, come to know Tuoni's, Tuoni's rapids and sounded the dead lands, streams, and you, you'd still be there today, but for your poor old mother. So the mother reminds him, and Lemming Cannon doesn't, doesn't heed to any of this advice, and he goes and leads. He takes his father's sword, his father has been a warrior. Also, he takes he takes a crossbow, and uh, and he leaves for the trip. And um, what he encounters is exactly what the mother had said. He will he encounters an eagle. He uh, does some magic, and he he gets um, gets past that eagle. And um, and and then he encounters uh, the red hot rocks, and what he does is he prays to Ukko again, the the main god, uh, old man, chief god, heavenly father, raise a bank of cloud from the northwest. Another send from the west, send a third out of the east, lift one out of the northeast. So these are all from the northern cold, cold climate directions, and uh, and let let uh, snow fall so that the snow is going to make it possible for these red hot rocks to cool down so the lemming can, can pass. And Ukko, the um, the main god, that old man, listens to Lemminkainen and, uh, and allows it to snow. And then Lemminkainen, he sings a bridge of ice across the pool, uh, snow from bank to bank, and he escaped that danger as well. He meets a wolf and a bear, and he does some magic. He has some, uh, some, uh, some uh, you flock. Um, uh, I mean, some um, the fur of a lamb or ewe, and that becomes like a flock of sheep, and uh, through his magic, and uh, the the uh, bears and the wolves run after those sheep, and Lemming and it gets to go. So uh, he encounters the iron fence, um, just magically. Uh, takes his knife and cuts a, cuts a, uh, uh, cuts it apart so that he can pass uh, he and his horse. Um, so only a knife. And um, there's the snake then, the, the last thing. Huge, huge snake, um, like a dragon. And uh, 
referred to also as a worm, like remember the dragons in, in the Icelandic sagas were referred to as, as worms and Beowulf too. So um, what does Lemmikainen do? It doesn't, uh, doesn't start to kill the snake, unlike his counterparts in the other stories we have read. So he, what he does, he speaks to the snake and he tells the snake its origins. Remember, this is what, what these men do, in, in men and, and probably also women, do in the Kaleva. They gain power over a, a, an obstacle or an enemy by telling the obstacle or enemy its origins and where did it come from. So, uh, so that's what Lemmingen does uh, and tells, um, tells the, the big, huge snake and it's like really big. It's, it's about the same size as, the, as, the, as Fafnir was, <laughs> you know, in, in size. It's a formidable snake. And uh, let me kind of talk to it, just talk to it. And uh, talking doesn't help. So then he turns into threats and speaks more to the snake on page 377. If you will heed, not even that, not yield with a little wor word. You grow bloated with your pain, swell with your days of suffering. You'll split villain into two, scoundrel into three pieces. If I seek out your mother and fetch your honored parent, I, I know coiled one of your birth, earth scream one of your growing. The ogress was your mother, an elf your parent. So this. Ogress is a female, female monster, a human eating monster, and that was the mother of the snake. And Lemming can tell us that was your mother, so I'm telling you your origins, more words of origins uh, in these threads. And, uh, and, and interestingly, interestingly, this works. So, um, so on page 379, so much for your kin, says Lemminkainen, You've your famous honor, black worm on the ground, thorny-hued maggot, ground-hued, heather-hued, uh, hued, all the rainbow-hued. Now leave the traveler's road before the fellow who moves. Let the traveler go. Let Lemminkainen trip along. Not to that Northland feast, the blowout of the well-born. So, uh, so what happens is, it's like you know these origin uh, tales. They seem to have immense power in the Kaiva, and and it is kind of like an indication that knowledge is power. If you know somebody's origins, you got power over him. And uh, what happens is the, the worm, the snake, the dragon, it decides to push off. So now the worm pushed off and the hundred eyes shifted and the fat snake turned away, changed its place along the road. Let the traveler go. Let Lemming Cannon trip along to that Northland feast. Uh, the sly crowds rebels. So in the same way as but differently. As Sigurd overcame Fafnir by killing Fafnir, Beowulf killed the dragon who was hoarding the treasure. Here we have Lemminkainen uh, just talking to the snake, telling it its origins. This is where you came from. I know about you. Go away. Give me a free pass to where I'm going. And that's how Lemminkainen gets into the Northland Forum. 27 is magic and mayhem. Lemminkainen gets in there, and you know how Lemminkainen is. He's not like, 
oh, hi, oh, how is everybody here? He just walks in and he is his cocky self. Um, he says, hail, I am welcome, hail to one who hails. Listen, master of Northland, would there be within this house barley for a horse to bite, beer for a fellow to drink? So then they give him, uh, give him beer, but he's been warned by his mother that this is a, this is a drink that has vipers in it. So, so, uh, so he's treated really. He's not a welcome character there, uh, because remember last time he went there, he just sang everybody out of the house uh, through his magic singing, uh, mistreated people. Uh, you know, and you don't do that when you go and visit somebody. Lemmy kind of doesn't have any good habits in the sense. So, uh, so he's brought this flagon of, uh, of drink, and a maggot is in the depths, and snakes halfway down, on the rim worms crawled, and lizards slithered. I wanted Lemmy kind of said, for mine other name for mine because his mind is always going to faraway places. For mine bloated out to hell with the dragon bringers, death uh, flagon bringers, death to the jug bearers before the moon rise, the end of this day. Then he put this into words. And you mean beer now, you have come to be idle, come to follow idle ways, beer shall be drunk with the mouth rubbish cast upon the ground with the ring finger and with the left thumb. So he, uh, he uh, does, is uh, kind of like telling the drink that you're not that good kind of a drink. So um, obviously full of words. So uh, a, a very gross. Some of these things are really that the, the descriptions are very colorful and, uh, and they kind of you know paint pictures that we don't necessarily want to see, but anyway. So, um, so he uh, kind of um, is able to incite a fight very quickly. And what he ends up doing is the fight moves then outside. They start fighting inside first, and what he ends up doing is beheading the Northland uh, master of Northlands, uh, um, beheading him, <laughs> and um, and it's quite uh, creepy. Uh, there were a hundred stakes on the hill, a thousand stood bristling in the yard, with hundreds of heads upon the stakes. One stake is without a head. That wanton lemming cannon took up the worthy boy's head, bore the skull from the farmyard on to that very stake's tip. And, uh, and then, now this is Lo, his husband, that lemming cannon has now killed. Uh, this is the father of Ilmarinen's new bride, new wife. So we are, th that's, that's a really bad thing to do. <laughs> and uh, and uh, beheading, beheading this person. And uh, he says, um, the hack, uh, he, he tells the, the wife, then Ahti the islander, he the far, fair for mine, when he had returned indoors, uttered a word and spoke thus, Bring water, hateful wench, that I may wash my hands of the evil master's blood, the vicious man's gore. The hag of the north uh, is angry, obviously, who wouldn't be if her husband hadn't, you know, has just been killed by this person. And she sang swordsmen, fellows with weapons, a hundred swordsmen, a thousand bearers of brands, out for Lemminkainen's head, Lemminkainen's head, to fall upon Farmine's neck. So what can Lemminkainen do other than leave? So, uh, so the hag of the north 
Louhi gathers men and Lemmikäinen has to leave. He goes hiding, this is 28, he goes into hiding and then, uh, then he, you know, uh, goes, goes back to his, his mama. Uh, so he soon, this is page 393, soon he arrived home back to his kindly mother with a sad look on his face and a gloomy heart. So Lemminkainen uh, looks very sad, very upset. The mother tries to ask, why do you look so upset? What's wrong with you? And Lemminkainen does not want to tell his mother immediately what had happened because he knows that the mother will be saying, I told you so, you're not supposed to, you have gotten yourself self into really big trouble. So several times, like three, uh, the mother asks, why are you in bad spirits and wherefore gloomy of heart? And finally, on page 396, uh, Lemmin tells him, uh, he, he starts by this, you know, roundabout, roundabout thing, like, you know, any, any young person telling, telling the parent, like, you know, what have you done? There was this deed. Uh, there was a deed, something that happened. <laughs> I didn't do anything, something that happened in those Northland yards. I then he then he faces the facts or fesses up. I've killed the northerners, northerners' son, him, the master of Northland. Northland has risen for war. The pest yonder for a fight against me. The woe be gone all around me on my own. And the mother is like, oh, okay. Um, I have already told you and already warned you to and still tried to forbid you to go to Northland. You should have stayed in the right and lived in the mother's cabins in your own parents' care and the farm of her who bore you and there would have been no war and no fight would have happened. But this is what happened. So the mom says, I told you so, I said so, you shouldn't have gone. Lemminkainen didn't listen, this is what happened. So, um, so now he needs his mother's advice. What am I gonna do now? And, um, and he says, um, I don't know where I could take my heels to hide from my crimes. Oh, my mother who bore me, where do you tell me to hide? And the mother does. The mother has had a husband, which is Lemminkainen's father, who doesn't really enter the, the story at all because he's long gone. But, but he has been very much like Lemminkainen is. Uh, Lemminkainen has inherited a lot of his traits, womanizing, warmongering, and so on, a restlessness. So this father had also been hiding at a place, which is the island, this is the island where, um, evidently the same island where Gullikki came from, or Lemminkainen brought Gullikki from. And the mother says, go to that island and hide there. And, um, and uh, because the men from the Northland are after you. And um, so, um, so mom, that's, that's the mother's advice and Lemming Cannon has no other choice than to heed her mother's, his mother's advice. Uh, so then we have um, 29, which is called conquests and when you read this think about why why this this particular runa is called conquests so uh, he goes to this isle island and he spends there three summers for five little years which means three summers and and two winters uh, uh, this uh, like called little years uh, three summers, two winters, five little years. He takes a sailboat, he goes there, and he knows that the men from the Northland farm are after him. If they find him, they will certainly kill him. 
and he sets off in his sail boat to the, for this nameless island and when he comes there he sees on the shore the maids of this island and there sat the headland maids on the shore of the blue sea they are looking and turning their eyes towards the blue sea one waited for her brother hoped her father was coming but that one truly waited who waited for her bridegroom far away far mind appears far mind's ship turned away uh, far mind ship further away it is like a small bank of cloud between the water and heaven so if you watch that little piece of uh, the um, age of um, the Iron Age, uh, the film, the movie that I posted on under the Kalevala folder, uh, you get an idea of, of how this goes. So then he kind of goes there, and he starts sleeping with the with the island women, island girls again. Except there is one whom he doesn't sleep and this is an old uh, woman one remained unsoothed page 408 one remained unsoothed one wretched old lass who, who is at, at the long headlands end in a tenth village by now Lemminkainen he had a mind to travel to go off to his own lands, but the wretched old lass came, and she put this into words. Wretched far mind, handsome man, if you don't remember me, I will, as you go from here, run your craft upon a rock. So this woman, whom Lemminkainen did not woo, uh, is mad about it, and he curses Lemminkainen. And uh, then um, Lemminkainen is thinking that hmm, maybe I, I should go and enjoy that last lassie too and disgrace that wretched woman on page 408. And is on his way and he sees that there are um, men who are after, after him. And uh, he asks the devil to protect him. He knows he needs to. He needs to leave. He he goes to his boat, but his boat has been burned. The men has have you know they really want him gone, and um, he eventually he ends up getting out from there after adventures, and uh, of course the other women don't want him to go, but uh, but he he cries for his mother uh, when he. When he when he when he gets back home, something horrible has happened. The men from the Northland farm have come there after him. Uh, they haven't found him, but they have found his home and they have burned it. So he sees this and he's like, surely they have killed my mother. And we can say a lot of bad things about Lemminkainen, his being a womanizer, his being a restless person, his being a warmonger, always getting into fights and wanting to, wanting to get into fights. What he do, did to Gulliki was horrible, uh, but uh, if there's something good about him is that he really cares about his mother. And, uh, and he starts to cry, he wept one day, he wept too, he wept not for the cabin, nor for the shed did he yearn, but for her he knew indoors, for his dear one in the shed. He beholds a bird flying, an eagle gliding, and set about asking, O oh, eagle, my little bird, could you not manage to say, where is the mother I had, where the fair one who bore me, the sweet one who suckled me? 
and uh, again we have nature helping we've got we've got animals helping uh, helping some don't help but you know you go you go through these uh, steps and he really at this point regrets his trip to the Northland which has caused the caused the destroy destroyal of her home and he thinks the killing of her mother as well. So he says on page 415, Vainly I a wretch in vain, ill-fated, I sized up my sword, bore a fair weapon in those northland yards, darklands field edges, to the doom of my own kin, the loss of her who bore me. So if Vanamonen, uh, Lemminkainen's mother loves Lemminkainen, and Lemminkainen loves her mother back, and uh, and uh, this one has a happy happy ending because Lemminkainen ends up finding her uh, mother. He turns around, turns around. He saw a bit of a track crumpled in the grass and broken in the heather. He trod the road to find out, trod the path to learn. Into the forest the road leads, the path takes him. He strolled from there one mile, two. He ran off a little way into gloomiest backwoods, the hollow in the dim wilds. He sees a hidden sauna, a small secret hut between two cliffs, and beneath the corner of three spruces sees there his kindly mother, that honored parent of his. So he finds his mother alive, and, uh, and that's a nice union. But uh, the mother asks what he's been doing and, uh, on the island, and interestingly, he tells, uh, tells kind of like, you know, roundabout things, doesn't mention the lassies that he was wooing there. Um, he says, then it was bad to live, then it was strange for me to be. They were afraid of their wenches, they thought their sluts, those pot-bellied wenches, old Harry's waddlers, would get ill treatment from me, spent too many nights with me, but I hid from the wenches, kept clear of woman's daughters, as the wolf hides from the pigs, the hawk from the village hens. So uh, he doesn't want to you know, confess. Of course he's a married man. He has married Gulliki. And uh, um, nothing much is said about Gulliki uh, anymore. But anyway, so uh, he doesn't want to tell his mother what he's been doing. So 30 uh, closes off the Lemming Cannon cycle. This is called Jack Frost. And uh, this is uh, an, an interesting, interesting story. Lemminkainen wants to takes his friend, want, friend wants to go back to uh, the Northland to fight them, uh, but uh, but encounters such horrible, uh, horrible uh, obstacles on his way there. The frost, Jack Frost, the um, uh, kind of incarnation of the cold weather. And this is something that Lohi has, um, has uh, cursed him with. So he wants to return uh, to, to the Northland farm to take revenge on the people there. I mean, it, hello, he is the one who actually killed the master beheaded the master of the Northland Forum, and so they came and revenged, burned his home, uh, but now he's going with you. You see the similar kind of a cycle of revenge that we've seen in the, in the Icelandic sagas, that the, the cycle of revenge and, and, and defend, defending of the, the so-called honor um, honor is not, you know, this is just like, this is, this is a very obstinate, obstinate person. So he takes his friend, whose name is Tiera, Tiera, 
with him, his, his buddy. And uh, on the way, when Piera and uh, Lemminkainen are on the way to the north, across the, the uh, you know, the water first, uh, Lohi casts the cold spell on them and freezes their boat. And that's when <laughs> Lemminkainen and Viera are forced to come back home. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of uh, endearing in a way. But uh, we have this surprise ending that Lemminkainen was, was set his mind that he's going to go and, and show them, the guys in the Pohjola, um, at Lohi. But, but we have the surprise ending. He actually returns back to his mother. Such are the obstacles that Lohi has, you know, cursed on, on their way that it cannot happen. So um, the next one is going to be the Kullervo cycle and read it for, for next week also. Start reading uh, according to the syllabus, uh, the, the, the cycle that follows the Kullervo cycle. The Kullervo cycle is quite, um, quite tragic. It's, uh, it's um, well, you'll read it and you'll, you'll find out. Uh, and we'll talk about that next time and continue then reading to the next uh, cycle again. Okay, thank you.